detectives and welcome to a very special publication day video. I have a new book out this month but for once it has nothing to do with Daisy or Hazel because this month I have written a short story as part of the new Return to Wonderland anthology from Macmillan. Now as you can probably guess from the beautiful front cover from Laura Barrett, this book has 11 short stories all about Alice in Wonderland. Me and 10 other authors have all taken Alice in Wonderland and Alice through the Looking Glass, chosen one of the characters in those two books, and written our own take on their lives, what they're thinking, something about them. The 11 authors who have contributed to this anthology are some of my very favourite children's authors working today, and they are Pamela Butchert, Pierce Torday, Amy Wilson, Chris Smith, Swapna Haddo, Maz Evans, Lisa Thompson, Patrice Lawrence, Lauren St. John, Pierce Torday, and of course myself. I'm so pleased to be part of this anthology with them and I think every single one of the stories is absolutely fantastic and very unique to the author who has written them, but some of the stories did really surprise me. They are quite different from the other books the authors have written and I loved seeing a different side to some of my very favourite authors. My story is called Ina Out of Wonderland and it is all about Alice's big sister Ina or Lorena, which is her full name. You don't actually see her very much in Alice in Wonderland. She's just there at the beginning of the book and the end of the book. She's the person who Alice is sitting with right at the start. Ina is reading, Alice gets bored, and then she notices the White Rabbit and her adventures begin. Alice in Wonderland, of course, is a character, but she is based on a real little girl called Alice Liddell. And Alice Liddell and her two big sisters Edith and Lorena lived in Christchurch College, Oxford, because their father was the Dean of Christchurch. That is where they met Lewis Carroll, whose real name was Charles Dodgson, and Charles Dodgson was one of the people who worked at the university, and that is how he got to know the Liddell sisters. I know this, and this is really important to me, because when I was a child, my father was the master of Pembroke College, Oxford, which is literally, as I say, it's across the road from Christchurch. So I grew up staring at the place where Alice lived, where Alice grew up. I went for walks in Christchurch Meadow, uh, which is where she and her sisters would play. I walked along the Charwell River, which is where Dodgson would take the girls out punting. So I really grew up surrounded by all of the things that Alice would have seen a hundred years before me. So to me, Wonderland is a real place. Of course, it's a magical fantasy world, but it's also Oxford. To me, Wonderland looks like Christchurch College. It looks like Christchurch Meadow. It looks like a lot of places that I grew up in that I used to visit. And so I really wanted to write an Alice short story that was set at Christchurch that mixed up Wonderland and Christchurch College. And I also wanted to think about what it feels like to be left out because I found out that Lewis Carroll met Lorena Liddell first. She was the oldest daughter. She was the one he met first, I think at a garden party. He only met Alice a few months later. So I thought, well, probably Lorena was the first child that he told stories to. She was probably the first Liddell sister that he shared Wonderland with. So what would she feel if she got too old for Wonderland and Charles Dodgson, Lewis Carroll started giving the Wonderland stories to Alice? And then I found a picture of the three Liddell sisters. And this is a picture that Lewis Carroll actually took. He was a photographer as well as a writer, as well as a mathematician. And he took pictures, a lot of pictures of the Liddell sisters. And in this picture, the three girls are sitting on a sofa and Alice and Edith, the middle sister, are sitting each side of Lorena. Lorena is sitting up right in the center of the sofa and she is glaring at the camera. She's glaring at the photographer. And I saw this picture and I really felt like I knew how Lorena felt. I felt like I knew what kind of person she was. I thought that she was the kind of person who would get really angry, who wouldn't be pushed around easily, who might fight back. And so the whole story sort of came into my mind at that moment. And I really knew what I wanted to write about. I knew that I wanted to write about Lorena being out of Wonderland and trying to get back in to help save her little sister when Alice falls into Wonderland in the story we all know so well. Here is the picture that inspired me.
And now I'm going to read a bit from my short story that I created based on that picture, based on my own childhood, and based, of course, on a book that I love, Alice in Wonderland. This is Ina Out of Wonderland. I was beginning to get very tired of reading, for my book had very small lettering and no picture at all, when my little sister Alice snuffled in her sleep and gave a great fidgety turn of her head on my lap. I looked up through the dappling sun on the river bank and saw a rabbit in a smart new waistcoat and bright check jacket. He was running away from us through the daisies and as I watched, he paused, staring down at the pocket watch in his hand. Oh dear, oh dear, I shall be too late, he cried. Then he took one more bounding leap and vanished into his rabbit hole. He had bought a new jacket since the last time I saw him. Alice cried out, Ina, at me and jumped like a fish, her hands making stars on the grass, and I knew that although she had not physically moved, as far as I could see, in her mind she was falling down and down into Wonderland, a place that is at once further away than London and Paris and also no distance at all. Wonderland is a place I know an unfortunate amount about. It does not have rules or bounds, and I have learned to my cost that it is everywhere and nowhere at once. It began as a story he told me, but it did not stay that way. Alice, I said, and I shook her shoulder. Alice, wake up. But Alice did not wake. I had not really thought she would. She could not, not until Wonderland was done with her. At that, my sorriness grew and spread until it filled me up inside. For I had not told Alice about Wonderland, not even once. I had practiced before the mirror many times, but I only sounded contrary and I only looked sour. After all, how could I explain to Alice or anyone that a dreamland where you can have a tea party that never ends, play croquet with hedgehogs, and dance to the mock turtle song is a horrid, dangerous place to be avoided at all costs. And now Alice was lost in Wonderland too. But instead of feeling hopeless, I found that I was filled with rage. I am the oldest, the one who can bear anything, and I do. For years, Wonderland has been catching me up and toying with me like our cat Dinah toys with a mouse and I am almost used to it. Although I have fought the Jabberwock more times than I would have chosen, and I have been beheaded by the Red Queen more times than I care to admit. I felt that this was most ill-mannered of Wonderland, and him, to now set upon my sister as well, for Alice is giddy and foolish and does not know that Raven from a writing desk. Wonderland's madness would swallow her up like a whale does a fish. At least it would until I did something about it. And at that moment I resolved to. He should not always have everything his way, after all. So I leant forward until my lips were almost Alice's ear and I whispered to her. I didn't know if she could hear me, but I had to try. I shall help you, Alice, I told her. Just remember to keep your head. And then I stood, gathered up my skirts, and ran. And to find out how Ina saves Alice, you will have to read the rest of my story. And of course, you should also read the 10 other stories in this book because they're all fantastic. Uh, the whole collection is illustrated by the wonderful Laura Barrett, who has also done the beautiful front cover. And I think this just looks great. Whether you've loved Alice in Wonderland for a long time or you're just discovering it now, I think this anthology is perfect for you. And of course, it is out now from Macmillan in beautiful hardback. You should be able to get it from any good bookshop or online. So that is my video for today. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you will rush out and buy lots of copies of Return to Wonderland. Alice Day is on the 6th of July, the day when we celebrate Alice and Lewis Carroll and all of the wonderful characters that he created. And I'm going to be taking part in that. I'm going to be doing an event in Blackwell's Oxford Westgate Branch with Amy Wilson and Patrice Lawrence talking about our stories and talking about the anthology and Alice in general. So if you're in the Oxford area, I hope you'll come along to that. That's all from me, uh, but I will be back next month with more recommendations, with more videos, but until then, goodbye.